Welcome back everyone and if you're new here I'd like to introduce myself my name is Will and I am the creator and the owner of this channel 411 now and I'm glad that you stopped by today to check out this true crime story here on my channel today I want to tell you a story about a cold case that was solved after three decades a cold case that was solved not using DNA technology but a cold case where good old-fashioned investigative work and you know boots on the ground actually helped solve this actual case after three decades thank you for joining me today cold case murder of Massachusetts teen solved without using DNA technology suspect arrested in Georgia Patricia Moreno was shot in the head at her foster mother's apartment in Malden on July 20th, 1991. A Massachusetts cold case unit cracked the unsolved murder of the teenage girl using old-fashioned and investigative work, not advances in DNA technology, and arrest a suspect in Georgia after more than three decades, authorities said Wednesday. Rodney Daniels, 48, was arrested without incident in Georgia on Monday in connection with the 1991 fatal shooting of Patricia Moreno at an apartment in Malden, Massachusetts, where she lived with her foster family, law enforcement officials announced. This is a case that was uh, solved not by new developments in forensic sciences, but as a result of relentless investigative work and a change in circumstances for some parties involved, said Middlesex District Attorney Mariah Ryan. On July 20th, 1991, police responded just after 3 a.m. to a third floor apartment in Malden where officers found Moreno laying on the fire escape landing with a single gunshot wound to the head. Moreno was still breathing when she was rushed to the hospital where do doctors determined she suffered irreparable brain damage. Moreno would later die that same day. Daniels, who was in a relationship with one of the teenage daughters of Moreno's foster mother, was present in the apartment at the time of the shooting, Ryan said. Daniels had told police at the time he was asleep in an armchair in the living room where the sounds of two gunshots woke him up. He then uh, found Moreno's body on the fire escape and alerted the foster mother to call 911. During the investigation, police found no signs of forced entry into the apartment, no evidence that anyone else had, had been there other than the foster mother, the girlfriend of the, the suspect, Daniels, and the uh, Moreno. During the investigation, police found no sign of forced entry but found additional clues inside of the actual apartment, like the casings from the crime scene. Investigators learned that Daniels possessed multiple handguns around the same time of the murder, and that he had threatened Moreno in the weeks prior to her death when he had uh, made sexual advances towards her, but no arrests were ever made. In 2020, the District Attorney's Office Cold Case Unit reviewed the murder and through a reconstruction of the crime scene determined that the position of the entry wound and the bullet's downward trajectory were consistent with the shooter firing the gun from in the doorway of the apartment, not from outside on the actual fire escape. Investigators also located a witness who lived uh, at, on the second floor at the time of the shooting, recently returned from outside of the country. The witness said he heard the noise of the gunshot and immediately looked to the fire escape where he saw a person go back into the apartment and close the door. The witness described the person particularly that matched the appearance of Daniels back in 1991, investigators said. Daniels faces a charge of murder that was due to arrive back in Massachusetts on Thursday for his arraignment. Good old investigative footwork, talking to witnesses, and being willing to actually sit back and say, okay, let's look at the evidence again. Take it step by step and use the knowledge that we have today and recreate the actual crime scene to figure out where the, the gun was fired from. Because 
from the get-go when the 911 operator was called and police were dispatched to the actual apartment there on the third floor. Everyone there said the gunshot wounds must have come from outside on the fire escape or from the building next door. Now, we know that that was impossible, that there was no way for anybody to have fired from the rooftop of the other building and at her and kill her, that the gunshot wound came from inside of the apartment off to the Massachusetts State Police and the cold case detectives and the DA's office for never giving up on this case. According to public records, this case since 1991 has been reevaluated a total of 16 times in all those years. No one has given up on this case. They have worked this case diligently over the years. Now, when it comes to Daniels and the evidence against him, I'm only putting out there a small percentage of the actual evidence that is against him. There is far more evidence that was damning that actually got them the grand jury indictment on murder charges. The actual grand jury itself actually wanted first degree murder. They wanted an enhancement on top of that because they believed that the actual crime was sexually motivated because she had rebuffed him on at least one prior attempt where he had made advances towards her and threatened her then. But this case has finally been solved. Her family now gets some closure, at least for now, until the trial begins, where they will have to rehash a lot of the memories. Hopefully, though, that Daniels will take some sort of plea agreement and to save the death, take the death penalty off the table for him because he has had a long, lengthy history of criminal activity. So, thank you again for joining me today. Again, if you have not subscribed, I really hope that you would, you know, click that, you know, subscribe button and click the bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload my next video. In the month of October coming up, I will have new content every single day for the entire month of October. Every Saturday and Sunday, I have live streams that I do every single week. So much so, this coming Saturday will be the 200th Saturday morning live stream that I've had in a row. I hope you can join us. Thank you very much for joining us. And you, stay safe out there.